another week and we're back together for after the snow it's the snowfall after show podcast now of course the new season ended a few weeks ago but we're keeping after the snow going i'm your co-host dave mays and co-founder ceo of breakbeat the new podcast network that we're part of and i uh, got my co-host freeway ricky ross what's up big dave what's going on rick Man, everything good, everything good. You down in Atlanta, huh? I'm in the A. Yeah, taking care of some business down here with our, our guy, Funny Marco. I saw that trailer, man. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I really like that one when he uh, told Boosie when he go around somebody that uh, that don't want him around. And Boosie said, hell no, I don't go around no motherfucker, something like that. I can't remember <laughs> the exact words, but... Uh, and then right. Marco came back and said, well, why you keep going back to Instagram? Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a minute to catch it, right? It kind of went over my head at first because, right. you know, I, I wasn't thinking about Instagram to kick Bootsy off like four or five times. Right. But, uh, once, I, once I thought about it, it was like, damn, that shit was funny as hell. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I saw that. Y'all doing some good work down there. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Yeah, that's coming out. That's a new, a new podcast uh, on Breakbeat. Um, to go along with After the Snow, Don't Call Me White Girl, Trapping Anonymous, um, and, uh, you know, a few others. But um, this is called uh, Cornbread TV with Funny Marco. Of course, you know, most people know Funny Marco for the last, you know, few years. Uh, he's really taken off on Instagram, doing his thing with his skits and pranks and all that kind of stuff. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's a really interesting new podcast. Cornbread TV starring Funny Marco. So yeah, it's yes. that's gonna be next dope. Week. That's gonna be dope. And and Marco, my man too. I like Marco. I I, I watch him on the internet all the time, man. And he's just funny as hell. So he is it's the right place take, point to be. Exactly, <clears throat> taking, taking, taking things to another level. How did you guys connect? Because I know I just found out you guys are, are friends. Uh, we working on on, on a uh, a little script together. A guy contacted me and and told me he had a a, a comedy script and. Uh, he wanted some comedians to to play in it. He wanted me to help him produce it. And uh, Marco was one of the guys that uh, that he wanted to ship on 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 uh, as a starter. Matter of fact, the starter movie. He'll be the star. And uh, I, I hit Marco up online, and, and he hit back, and and we switched numbers, and we've been talking, you know, for about about five or six months now, you know, off and on, and uh, um, you know, I think Marco is gonna blow up. You know, I, th- I see big things for him. So uh, yeah. You know, guys hit me up about the movies because, you know, they know I got the little movie connections and stuff like that. So I, I get those kind of calls all the time, man. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. You know, we just been chilling, man. Uh, that's good. I, I, I'm, that's I'm good. back in the gym, man. I had to get back in the gym, Dave. You know, yeah, I, I, that's I, what I'm I, talking about. Yeah, man. I caught something a couple weeks ago. I, I've been at this cough. I, I, went, I went and got COVID tests and everything. I had three COVID tests, came back negative. So, so I felt good about that. But the damn cough won't go away, man. And uh, I said, you know what? You better get your ass back in the gym, man. Fuck that. <laughs> so I'm back that's, in the gym, man. I'm working out. I'm gonna try to uh, try to lose about 15 pounds. You know, okay. uh, uh, get myself in shape. You know, uh, we we gotta stay healthy. Ain't no sense in getting wealthy if you ain't healthy. You know. So, that's right. Uh, yeah. We already know that you. We know that you eat eat right with the vegan lifestyle that we share. You know, definitely eating for your health. Um, yes. And it's enjoyable. I can't, you know, I can't try to front like I don't love like it ain't. Uh, <laughs> hey, I want to come back to Chicago so I can go over there to uh, Soli Vegan, man. That right, place was. Right. I'm dreaming about that food right now. You know. Well, man, that's that's what that. Now that you say that, it, it's it's kind of crazy because I just found out from you that you're coming to Chicago next week. I'll be in L.A. Um, so I'm gonna miss you. While you're in Chicago, we won't get to go to Soul Vegan together, and then you you won't get to come. So to L.A., you know, we're launching a podcast, as you know, but I haven't announced it yet with Bill Bellamy uh, called yeah. uh, called uh, Top Billing, Top Billing with Bill Bellamy. And uh, so we're we're recording the first shows with him in L.A. next week, but we'll be doing yeah, it. Yeah, you on a tear, man. Hey, you on a tear, yeah. man. <laughs> <laughs> the, hey, you, you putting it together. Uh-huh. No, man, the breakbeat family, man. We we got we got to grow and grow and keep making our our mark out here and help you know just bring this 
this all this incredible content and per personalities and great points of view and authentic authenticity back you know into the game uh that's what's needed man authenticity credibility absolutely you know? absolutely so, absolutely yeah. it's so much faking and, and i think that's what's wrong with the world you know uh we got in the habit of faking it you know till you make it and, and See, people just say, hell, we're making it. We're just going to fake it all the way through this thing. So, right, uh, right. Bringing that authenticity back is definitely something that, that that's, that's very much needed, man. And, and I appreciate you for doing that. I'm going to be in Chicago. We're going to be doing expungement clinics, man. We're going to be uh, having, we're going to have about, about eight or nine lawyers out. And uh, we're going to be taking people convictions off, you know, uh, uh, and, oh, and also educating them about the marijuana industry. Um, uh, you know, because Chicago is legal now, so. Uh, a lot of black and brown people don't know that they can get licenses because the city is not notifying people and, and mm -hmm. we want them to get into the business and not that big corporation, uh, you know, just take over everything. So from the 23rd to the 25th, we'll be there doing expungement clinics around the city. Uh, I have the flyers posted on my social media because I don't know where they at right now, where, where the events going to be right. held. I, right. I, I, I find out at the last minute. All right. Man, well, that's big. That's that's good stuff right there. A lot of people can benefit from getting those records expunged, you know? Um, yeah, well, you know, that's what it's about, helping other people, man. It, it ain't just about, you know, getting for yourself and, and, and once you're good, you're good. You know, no, no, we got to help others, man. We got to each one teach one, each one lift one. So uh, that's my motto, man. Let's help each other. Yeah, man. Well, um, yeah, man, it's a, it's, a, it's a pleasure to work with you on a weekly basis. And, um, you know, today we're going to go back again to season one, which we started a couple of weeks back. Uh, we're now on episode three. Um, it's called Slow Hand. And, uh, you know, we remember at the end of last week, Franklin got got jumped and jacked and beat up and everything. And, um, you know, what's he going to do about it? So we, we start to find out in uh, in uh, this new episode this week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was crazy. Um, it, 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 it's amazing how stuff like that happened, you know, all the time. You know, people are, are walking around with their whole savings in, 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 in their backpack. You know? <laughs> it's a no-no. Don't walk around with all your savings in your backpack, man. You might regret it. So uh, Franklin's in trouble right now. All right. you know, he's beat up, you know, uh, uh, confused. Uh, matter of fact, you know, uh, uh, at the beginning of the episode, we see him walking back into the club looking for the, uh, you know, looking for the lady because he right. felt like she set him up. Claudia, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's her name, Claudia. Yeah, I was surprised uh, I was, that, that that she gave up the name, like, because you know, we know that she she set him up, and he knew that. But why? Why do you think she she was so willing to just give him a name? I guess because she still want to uh, mess with him and, and get the product. I don't know. She, she you know, she's so she's so so uh, grimy. I didn't know that she had set him up though. I didn't see you know it didn't show that that that, that she actually set him up. Uh, but well, yeah. then I, I I know Franklin had said that he saw her talking to him. Yeah, and in the last weeks last week's episode when he was up in there. Uh, with her, he was sitting over, uh, you know, in one of the little sections with her. She got up and she, they show her for just a second standing there talking to those two guys right in front of Franklin in her club, mm -hmm. right before, right. you know, then they leave out and conveniently, you know, 15 minutes later when he bounces is when they, they rob him. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got to put two and two together. See, I missed that scene. I missed okay. the scene where she was talking to him. I, I didn't I didn't see that. But I did hear Franklin say that 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 well you were talking to him. Um so so that was the implication. Yeah, but she she didn't like the fact that he had accused her of of, of setting him up either. I, I saw that when 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 him and her were talking. She told him to right. be careful right. what you what you say, you know, when you are uh, um when you're accusing people. Yeah. She she she's uh grimy and rough. You know, <laughs> but but uh, but Franklin, you know, asks nicely and she she gives up the information um, on on the two guys, Lenny and Ray Ray. And uh, she tells him that they're down with the Western tribe. You know what that that means when she said that? No, nah, no. Nah. There were no gangs <laughs> in, in L.A. named yeah. that at that time. Yeah. Still, oh, I don't yeah. know the Western tribes right now. 
you know, some of the stuff we know that that, that they just added and, and, and threw stuff in here as, as, as they went, you know, uh, it's definitely not a, a, a authentic Los Angeles story, you know, where it's just all Los Angeles, uh, uh, no outside influences and, and, and things like that there. So uh, I think that's how they did it. And that tribe is just something that they just came up with. Got it. Because most of our gangs out here, you know, uh, uh, during that time was 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 Crips and Bloods. Yeah, you know, yeah. either you was a, a, a Compton Crip, or a Compton Blood, or a Sixty, or a, a, a East Coast, or a Hoover. You know, those were the names of, of of our street gangs at that time. Most of the gangs were naming themselves after streets and and, and avenues and, and and stuff like that. There, uh, mm. nobody called himself a tribe. Okay. <clears throat> to my knowledge. To my knowledge. There was the Booyah tribe. They came along. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. Them was Samoans. Remember yeah. them was they uh was the rappers and, 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 and they was from Carson. They was from the Carson area. But I, they came on later, later on the scene after uh, uh a few years of, of the Crips and the Bloods. Yeah. They used to roll with um Easy E, a lot of the Samoans. Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, they sure did. They sure did. They had they had a couple hit records out too, I believe. They did. Yeah, Booyah Tribe definitely did their thing. Shout out Booyah Tribe. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we um, we uh, we you know the storylines are are developing. Um. So also, um, of course, you know him and the two younger family members of the Mexican cartel. Um. Uh, is it Pedro and Lucia? Um, you know, they got a problem because they try to rob their dad to buy the cocaine. Um, that, you know, also went in there. Guy came home. He had to kill one of their dad's guys. Dad is pissed. He's like, you know, the inside job. Somebody's got to, you know, pay for this. So they have to, um, kill someone. They decide one of his inner, other inner circle to make it look like that's the guy that, that did it. Um, so we also, we start to see again, we talked about this before and he's the voice of reason. He's like, you know, Hey, you know, I don't want to, uh, kill anybody that has a family, you know, that's not right. And, um, you know, we see that whole exchange between him and the, and the, and the two cousins. Yeah. Well, also seems like he, 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 he's, a. uh, well, what's what's the word I'm looking for? You know, somebody who who who's humble, who who's honest. You know, who wants to do the right things. You know, he he, he he's loyal. You know, maybe maybe a bit too loyal sometimes to uh to the people that he's working with. But uh, uh from, from from what I'm starting to see, you know, from from also is his his loyalty. You know, and his commitment to 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 uh. uh protecting the people that he's around and, and, and doing the right thing. I mean, he, he just seems like he's, he's that guy to me. The, he's probably the most loyal guy that I saw in, in, in the show so far. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's, he's an interesting, likable character, but um, you know, he's like, like we're starting to see, I think with, uh, with all these guys, you know, they're faced with really difficult choices and, and they're going to, you know, they're basically going to do what they have to do. So also, you know, has to go along with it. He's going to go and 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 uh, kill one of these another person um, in order to try to you know protect them and their plan to uh, you know start getting into the coke game. Um, so um, Franklin, you know, leaves the club, and of course he goes straight to Leon. So he's uh, he's walking through the projects to go to Leon's crib. Um, what did you think of that scene? Did those projects remind you of any anywhere in particular? No, not 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 necessarily. But you know, we got so many projects out here, man. That uh, you know, it could have been any number of them. Mm-hmm. Um, Jordan Downs, Nickerson Gardens, Imperial Courts. Uh, um, what's the other one? Uh, man, we got so many of uh, uh, the Peblos. You know, we we got about. In, in LA, we have about 10 projects. So could have been any number of projects that they were going to. But, you know, I, I figure it more than likely was was one over in, in, in South Central, probably yeah. uh, uh, the Peblos or the, uh, I mean, not the Peblos, but uh, Imperial Court or the Jordan Downs. 
those mm-hmm. were, were, were some of the most uh, uh, popular uh, projects here in, in L.A. Yeah, if so it had been my scene, it would it would have been one of those. Uh-huh. If it been, if it had been my scene, it would have been one of those projects because my my ties was really really strong with the Grape Streets. Uh, okay. Yeah, a uh, uh, couple of the guys that was shot callers for the Grape Streets was really really good friends of mine. Uh, Chubb, rest in peace. Um, uh, matter of fact, he's in my book. Uh, I talk about how how we met in the book. I was at the skating ring and. Uh, him and uh, Hancho, it came up, and the last time I saw Hancho, uh, we was arguing, and and, and I damn near put a pistol on Hancho. So, uh, uh, you know, Hancho was just he, he hadn't been out of jail long, man. He had like some twenty three inch arms, and, and he was talking about fighting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I said we ain't doing no fighting, man. <laughs> you guys, you guys ended up becoming friends, right? You know. Well, we were friends even before that, you know, we, okay. we, we, we went out and, and, and did some cars, you know, stole some cars together and stuff. But uh, this particular night we were having a party and uh, he wanted to turn our party out, you know, and uh, we wasn't having it. I like, mean, you ain't turning our party out. But uh, see, we had started having cocaine money and uh, he, he didn't know. So uh, he pulled his car up in front of little Tommy and they started jumping their cars and, 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 you know, Tommy had everything, all the new stuff in there. You know, he had, he had, he had money now, you know, so his car just, just killed Hanjo's car off and, and everybody started laughing at him and, and he wanted to fight then. <laughs> but it's a big scene, man. He went and got, uh, you know, after I pulled a gun on him, he went and got all the Grape Streets, man, probably about 50 cars pulled up, you know, with him and uh, surrounded the club and, uh, it was a big scene, but then one of my cousins came out that that was a gangbanger too, you know, because we wasn't gangbangers, you know. I never gangbanged, mm-hmm. so uh, he was able to get the thing squashed that night. But I oh, hadn't seen oh. Hancho since that night, so uh, I'm going to skate ring to pick up a little chick, and uh, I look up, man, I'm trapped, you know, can't get out, don't have no pistol on me, and uh, he with four dudes. But uh, it, it turned out to be all good. Matter of fact, that was one of the nights that really uh, gave me a new strategy, you know, on how to uh, get the shot callers from the different hoods and, and put them down. So uh, that was a big, a really a big night for me. It turned out to, to be one of my one of my uh, strongest moves that, that that I made. No, I was going to say, Franklin, you know, he's he's determined to get this money back. He's like, man, you know, I can't go out like this. He, you know, he knows Ivy's he's going to be looking for that money. So he goes to Leon and, uh, you know, I need your help. Leon said, I'm, you know, what you want to do? I'm, I'm ready. And uh, takes him around the neighborhood, I guess, to find some guys that he thinks will, will be able to help them locate Lenny and Ray Ray. Um, well, Leon a gangster. Uh-huh. They talking about Leon beating somebody up in Wayside. Right. Then when he walked right. in the house, the guys were talking about, man, I remember you at Wayside. You you whooped that dude. And, and then Leon gave the explanation why he whooped him and, and, and whatnot. Um, so, you know, Leon had been in the mix. Yeah. They tried, they tried to call him Little Leon. He didn't like that anymore. He said, I'm Leon now. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no more Little Leon. But, but the guy, I think his name is Carvel, uh, decides to help them out. And, uh, you know, they go off. Uh, jump into a car with Carvel. I don't know how how Leon and Franklin were getting around. They just kind of showed up over there. I don't know if they had a car or how they were. No, he ain't got his motorcycle no more. Right. <laughs> he know the motorcycle gone. Right. I was wondering how they got there, but um, but uh, they take off. They take off with Carvel to go uh, chase down uh, Lenny and Ray Ray and try to get their money back. And uh, you know, it gets it gets pretty. Pretty wild. That's you know one of the main storylines of, of this week is uh, you know they show up at um, I guess it's Ray Ray. No, Lenny. Lenny is the one that uh, the guy says he's he's the one. You know he's gonna have the money. Uh, Ray Ray. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, just the way they started. You know, they started the thing off to me it was crazy. You know, with him knocking on the door and then putting the gun up to uh, Franklin's head. I didn't understand why he did that. You know, right. uh, I guess they made it look kind of like 
uh, he was tricking a guy into thinking that he had a gun on, on 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 Franklin, but I don't think the guy really had enough time to even see who he was who he was with because as soon as he cracked the door, uh, he kicked that motherfucker in and went went up in there. Right, right. You would have thought Lenny would have just cracked the door like that. You know what I mean? He he, he would have been a little smarter than just opening yeah. the door for somebody. Yeah. Unless, unless he really knew this guy Carvel, but didn't sound like. They were that that tight. It didn't, and then I I was wondering why would he put the gun on on you know on Franklin and and, and I don't remember correctly. Uh, did he hit Leon too? I he, I don't know. I don't th- I think he was focused on Franklin. I was I was thinking it was because you know he thought that Lenny would recognize him and be like, hey, I got this guy. His his you know, but that don't make a lot of sense necessarily either. Um, yeah, it didn't really. That that little scene was kind of kind of. You know, kind of screwy to me. I, I I didn't really figure it all out, but uh, anyway, they got in the house. That's the main part. They got in the house, so they and they had their man. Yeah, yeah. Things get a little ugly and a little wild. Uh, Lenny, Lenny don't want to give up nothing. He's talking shit. Franklin, Franklin tries to reason with him. You know, he's thinking he'll be able to talk him into, you know, cooperating. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Franklin think he got the gift of gab. He can yeah. talk his way in and out of everything, huh? Yeah. They don't know when them dudes take that money, they don't want to give it back. It become theirs once they get their hands on it. Yeah, that didn't work. He tried though. You gotta give him give him uh credit for thinking uh he, he, he could try that approach. But uh yeah, it gets a little crazy. They start beating him with the bat, you know, uh Carvel's going crazy and then uh drags him in the bedroom. And uh, of course, we you know we learned that he was raping him, um, you know, at the end, and, sexually uh, assaulting. <laughs> That's a sexual assault. It looked like yeah. looked like he uh, uh, abused the man, and uh, he'll never be the same again. Look like, but he mm-hmm. gave that money up. He did. He sure did. And. Uh, Carvel took it and bounced. <laughs> so uh, yeah, and that was crazy. That was crazy. Uh, I thought he would at least gave Franklin him a cut, you know. Right, right. But uh, but that, I guess that's how it is, you know. If he did all the work, he felt it was all his, you know. Franklin didn't step up to the plate to uh, 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 to do his part. So uh, right, he felt, he probably was going to take it all anyway. Right, he felt he could he could walk over them. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because remember, even even the other guy was calling them pussies, and then uh, uh, when he wanted to beat him with the bat, remember Franklin then wouldn't let him beat him with the bat, right? And, right. and that's when he went off and started breaking everything up in the house, you know. Yeah. And then after a while, he just took matters into his own hands and say, "Fuck y'all, y'all don't know what y'all doing. Let me, let me, let me handle this." Yeah. Let me yeah. show y'all how the streets work. So yeah, I want to I want to talk a little bit about uh, the other big character and storyline that's developing here, which is Teddy and you know the CIA uh, agent turned you know drug international drug trafficker, um, and uh, so Teddy's you know moving moving things along, picking up where uh, his former agent that OD left off, but now he's trying to clean things up. He he uh, they go to pick up some guns. Um, that Alejandro or them had arranged, but uh, Teddy doesn't like it. The guns got serial numbers. He doesn't want to get him traced back, and they get in an argument over that. Um, Teddy insists we're going to file every serial number off before we take these down to Nicaragua. Um, so uh, yeah, they had rocket launchers too um, that they were bringing down. Yeah, there. grenade launchers. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, they had, they had oh, yeah. a lot of a lot of a lot of ammo in there. Yeah, and the guy yeah. talked about how he had got him off an of army base. You know, it was guns that he could write off the book. Uh, Teddy was concerned though about them guns being traced back to the guy and then coming back to coming back to them. Yeah, so you know, we we learned that um, Teddy has a son, and the mother of his son, I guess, uh, pops up in L.A. Uh, she is also a CIA operative and apparently, you know, they had met in, I think, Iran and ended up falling in love, having a baby. And, but now 
it's, it's coming out there with the baby to say, look, you know, I heard that you're doing a lot of crazy stuff out here. You get involved in, in something that's, you know, could be really dangerous. And, you know, basically saying like, you know, I'm worried about our son, are you? And, uh, you know, she ends up leaving. Um, and, but, you know, Teddy goes into his whole, you know, this is what the country wants me to do. And, uh, he's got all these big plans. You know, he'll be able to control the cocaine business. It's a rich white man's drug for celebrities and spoiled kids. And, you know, it's not going to, not going to hurt anybody and I can control the market. And this is going to help, you know, us win this war in Nicaragua that, that we need, need to win. So he also talked about being able to cut it off when he got ready. Yeah, he did. Yep. Yep. He threw that in there as well. So we're seeing, you know, that Teddy, um, again, he's taking his job serious. He's going to whatever measures it takes to get things done, but they're trying to bring in now, you know, his kind of love interest and the conflict with the family that we're going to see, you know, also probably, you know, with, with, uh, the other character groups, Franklin, of course, and his family are heavily connected. Um, but yeah, any um, you and know, kind of go, you know, you know what, what's, what he's going through with his girl is almost what any businessman go through, though. You know, when you when you're working too hard, the the the, the wife don't really understand that. Uh, you know, they want you around the house more, and 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 here you are out on the street pushing. You know, yeah. trying, trying to trying to make advancements. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so we're, we're getting to know Teddy a little better and, um, that's one of the other main characters. And then, um, you know, Franklin, um, and, uh, his uncle, he's going back to his, his uncle, uh, for help. You know, now that Carvel ran off with the money, um, Franklin's, you know, got to figure out something else to do. And, um, so he he's goes, out he needs he figured out he needed a gun. Right. We don't know what he's going to do with it yet. Because Carmel got a gun. Yeah. He definitely do. So you ain't taking that money back. You ain't got no gun. You can forget yeah. that. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. the uncle was telling me if you take a gun out of that house, uh, um, you got to use it. Yeah. Now... Oh, uh, you think that's what he's going to do? Try to go pull up on Carvel and, and get the money back? Well, I mean, Franklin's been through a lot already, you know, in, in these first three episodes, you know, from 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 uh, Ivy giving him a key on credit, you know, <laughs> right off the bat to uh, uh, finding a customer the same day, you know, who's buying kilos of cocaine, uh, who, for the most part, set him up to be robbed. And then uh, finding somebody to help him go and get the robbers. And then that guy turned around and robbed him again. So uh, I'm pretty sure that Franklin is, is starting to think that uh, that he's going to need some protection. You know, that he's going to need to be uh, at least playing on a, on, a, on a level playing field with these guys. Because you can't uh, uh, you can't fight a guy with a gun. Right. Right. And you don't have so much. So it looked to me like, you know, Jerome basically said he's not giving him the gun. He said, your mom, I don't want your mom showing up here because you pulled out and hesitated. And, you know, he said, it's your funeral and I, your mom ain't going to come in here and, and, and find out that I gave you that gun. Um, looked like, of course, Auntie Louie wants to help him. But I thought he left there without the gun. And at the end, he, of course, he goes home with his mom and he's got a gun. So do we know? Where he got that gun? No, nah, they didn't. They didn't. I, I don't remember seeing uh, uh, where he got the gun from. Mm -hmm. you know, so I don't know. I didn't, see, I didn't see the uncle give it to him, and 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 like you said, it, uh, I I wasn't sure that the uncle was going to do it anyway. Right. The way he was talking to him. Right. So I guess we'll find that out whether whether Uncle Jerome ended up giving it to him, or Auntie Louie, or or if he went somewhere else. But he definitely has the gun, uh, sneaks it in the, in, in the house at the end and, um, you know, changes his clothes up and uh, tell, tells his mom he got uh, something fell on him at this construction job, I guess. And that's why he got the bruises on his face. And uh, she seems to believe him. 
you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that 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 was funny. Yeah, I, I remember that. She told him he he, he probably need to get another job. <laughs> right, right, right. All right. Yeah, yeah. So it 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 it's it, it's it's setting the foundation, you know, for for I guess the, the the next series to answer some of the questions that uh that we have right now uh uh, uh for the show, you know, see which yeah. direction it's gonna go in. But uh, we also know that these are the shows that really set the tone uh, uh for the audience, you know. Uh, um, I went to a couple parties this this weekend and, and the people were saying that they're getting disattached to the show because of, of the direction that, that it went in for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that'll be interesting as we walk through seasons one, two, three, you know, kind of catch ourselves up on things. So, yeah, even though uh, these episodes have been out, um, I'm still looking forward to watching next week. It's got me, you know, wanting to know what's going to happen next. So um, I'll definitely be well, watching. Me too. Them. Yeah, and yeah. then I like you know when you analyze it, you know you because you 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 uh you pay real close attention to detail. So when you when you bring up things, because I be missing stuff, man, and, and then you be saying, well, this happened and that happened, and 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 I was like, wow, I missed that, huh? So yeah. uh, um, it, it's interesting to me too, you know, and and I can see how people can can become attached to this show, you know, because uh, it can definitely grab your attention, you know, where yeah. where, where you yeah. want to know what happened. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, we're going to keep giving the people after the snow. We're going to keep breaking down these episodes. We're going to, you know, give our our insight, our analysis and and help people understand what what's real, what isn't real. Uh, what, you know, in terms of this whole whole story of uh, cocaine and uh, bringing it into for, you know, the government, bringing it into the country that you were, you know, in, in the middle of, uh, you know. 30, 40 years ago. Um, very, very important story. So we want to stick with it. And uh, we got to talk to our producer, Tarek, man. He does a great job. But we, you know, we got to figure out some guests, man. Let's get some some uh, guests going uh, so we can, you know, add some people. I'm going to bring on some, probably some of the other uh, breakbeat hosts soon. Uh, maybe Bill Bellamy. And I don't know if Mark will watch a snowfall or not. We got to ask him. Uh, but, uh, you know, we'll do that as well. Sounds good. Sounds good. I know. I know a couple of people who, uh, uh, from out here that, that 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 would love to come on, and uh, they may not be the favorable guests to, to Snowfall, but you know they would definitely love to come on and, and, yeah. and, and talk. They talk. They talk. Well, let's do it. Let's do it. So after the snow, uh, we'll be back next week. I'm I'm uh, your co-host Dave Mays, and I'm Ricky Ross. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Boom. Peace.